A Secret Service agent who was metres away from John F. Kennedy when he was assassinated in 1963 has made a shocking new revelation that calls into question whether the gunman acted alone. In a soon-to-be-released book, Paul Landis claims he picked up and moved a bullet from the Kennedy's car, a secret he's kept for 60 years. Alice Wilkins explains why it is so significant. An assassination that resulted in more questions and conspiracies than answers. President John F. Kennedy shot in Texas by Lee Harvey Oswald, who was then himself assassinated two days later. Neither of the men are here to set the story straight, but this one, a former Secret Service agent, says he wants to after years of trying to block that day out. Going through my head that was repeating, it was just a, like a looped tape of the head, president's head exploding. But Paul Landis had a major revelation to share, one that he's kept secret till now. Moments after JFK was shot, the Secret Service agent says he picked up a bullet from the back of the president's car and carried it to what he thought was JFK's hospital stretcher. This is the place to leave the bullet that will help them resolve what happened. Except the stretcher ended up carrying the other injured passenger from the vehicle, Texas Governor John Connolly, and that led authorities to believe the bullet had dislodged from Connolly's body. But Landis's revelation changes all that. I think it is the most important evidence in 60 years. Um, nothing else has come out like this that is so uh, radically different from the, the standard narrative. The standard narrative, supported by the government's Warren Commission inquiry, has always had sceptics. It proposed that as well as the fatal bullet that hit JFK's head, a second bullet hit him in the back, travelled through his neck and out his front, straight into the body of Governor Connolly, ricocheting into his arm and then also his leg. The theory largely decided because of that bullet found on Connolly's stretcher. It was dubbed the magic bullet. The seemingly impossible pathway was even demonstrated in the film JFK. Never in the history of gunfire has there been a bullet this ridiculous. The theory was used to help establish that assassin Lee Harvey Oswald had acted alone. But Paul Landis now says the bullet didn't travel very deeply into JFK's back before popping out behind him in the car where Landis found it. And that's encouraged people who believe one bullet hit JFK in the head, another hit him in the back, and yet another bullet must have hit Connolly and one gunman couldn't have fired all three that quickly. It was lying in this, in this seam right there. Landis is now 88 years old, and while many will query why he never mentioned all this earlier, it suggests the magic bullet perhaps wasn't magic after all. It was simply picked up by a 28-year-old Paul Landis and placed on the wrong man's stretcher. Alice Wilkins, News Hub.